Hey everyone, it's time for Good Week Israel, where we'll give you ILTV's latest positive highlights. So get ready to smile because coming up, a whole new section to the Western Wall Tunnels finally set to open to the public. Israeli researchers may have found the solution to the globe's organs transplant crisis. And we'll find out what it takes to design the perfect home for the Israeli high class. The Israel Antiquities Authority and Western Wall Heritage Foundation providing visitors to the Holy Land with a new adventure through the Western Wall Tunnels, the most luxurious section unearthed in the tunnels to date. Chana Rifkin with the details. A grandiose hall in the Western Wall Tunnels just west of the Wilson's Arch and Temple Mount was discovered some time back. But over the next few weeks of summer, the section finally becoming accessible to the public. Then, combining remnants of a few time periods, including Hasmonean, Herodian, and Roman, this new tour is seriously amplifying visitor experiences through the newly discovered layer of the Jewish story. Mordechai Soli Eliav, chairman of the Western Wall Heritage Foundation, likewise saying the discovery expanding on the, quote, complexities of Jewish life during both the Hasmonean and Roman periods. אנחנו נמצאים עכשיו בעצם בתוך אולם מפואר ששימש כטרקלין לאירוח של אנשי מועצת העיר והאורחים המכובדים שלהם לפני העלייה להר הבית. ושאלת השאלות מה עשו בו. המקורות ההיסטוריים ובעיקר כתבי יוסף בן מתתיהו מאירים בפנינו את האופי של האזור הזה. יש פה בניינים ציבוריים מפוארים והתמזל מזלנו לבקר באחד המפוארים שבהם. בניין שנבנה ככל הנראה בשנות ה-20-30 של המאה הראשונה לספירה ובעצם שימש Additionally, Wexler Abdollah explaining how furniture, while not uncovered with the structure, are believed to have included wooden reclining sofas. This belief being assumed due to the knowledge of such sofas' popularity, particularly during the Roman and Hellenistic eras, where people ate while reclining. In any case, the structure has been declared the most grand Herodian building unearthed in Jerusalem thus far, and is providing new context for the Western Wall tunnels including how their use may have evolved over time. According to the IAA, in the last years before the Second Temple's destruction, big renovations were made, including the installation of a mikvah, or ritual bath, as it's known. This as visitors were required to purify themselves before entering the Holy Temple. The new trail set to open to the public before the coming high holidays. A breakthrough in the field of human organ transplantation, hybrid animal-human organs. And they could just be the solution to both the global shortage of transplant organs, as well as the risk of implant rejection or graft versus host disease. A team of Israeli researchers under Dr. Shachal Cohen at Bellinson Hospital revealing that they've successfully developed a pig organ with human blood vessels, where the human vessel coating is the point of contact between the graft and its recipient. And the results being an animal organ that is far less likely to be rejected by human hosts. As for how this feat was done, Cohen explains that they removed the lining of the pig organ's blood vessels and replaced it with a human layer engineered in a lab from human placenta cells. Now, why placenta, you might ask? Well, Cohen explains that the placenta is in fact the ideal organ as it naturally connects two human beings by maintaining the bonds between mother and fetus. Finally, so far the successful experiments have all been conducted ex vivo or outside of the body, and they include a hybrid heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, and more. Now, changing speeds to something a little bit more joyous, former Colombian telenovela star known professionally as Maritza Rodriguez has decided to give up her career in the limelight to pursue a more religious lifestyle here in Israel. The former actress is married to Emmy Award-winning Mexican TV producer Joshua Mintz, and in 2018, after 13 years of marriage, she announced her official name change to Sarah Mintz as part of her journey towards Orthodox Judaism. Mintz is known for starring in roles in shows like Telemundo's Silvana Sin Lana and Netflix's Lord of the Skies. She made Aliyah with her family of four in April of this year, settling in Israel's capital city of Jerusalem. The high-profile couple are opening up now about living a fuller and more spiritual life, with Sarah recently telling Israeli Channel 13 News, For more than 25 years, I had a career as a TV host, actress, model, in the theater, on the red carpets, but none of it compares to what I have today. 
The former actress also regularly posts about modest fashion and her love of Judaism to her 1.6 million followers on Instagram. When asked if she'd consider relaunching her acting career in the Holy Land, Mintz left the possibility open while admitting her current focus is on her children and sharing her story with the world. Looking for an easy dairy dinner that can be thrown together in minutes? This Not A Recipe Recipe by Danielle from Kosher.com is exactly that. Please everyone at the table with this easy, personal pizza that will save time and create endless possibilities. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dinner with Danielle here on Kosher.com. I'm so excited to be here today because I'm bringing you a recipe that is not a recipe. Oh, what does that mean? It's basically just a recipe where you throw a bunch of things together and boom, magic, you have dinner on the table. This is good for times when you look like you're going to a wedding or you're going to parent-teacher conferences or you have a meeting or you're going to meet a friend in the city or you're going out to a show, a time where you're dressed up but you really need to get dinner on the table for your family, this is the recipe for you. Today's throw together dinner recipe is pizza. That is right. And it all starts with our star ingredient, the Geffen pre-cut puff pastry squares. Why pre-cut puff pastry squares? Because I don't know what it's like where you serve dinner, but where I serve dinner, everybody needs something different. This is the easiest and quickest way to make a pizza that is individually customized for each member of your family. That's right, you heard me. Customizable individual pizzas. The first thing you want to do is open your package and we're going to lay out the squares. You're going to get your puff pastry squares laid out on a sheet pan and then we're going to create the crust. You're just going to take a fork and you're going to start half a centimeter away from the edge and just create a border. This is going to allow the outside of the puff pastry to puff up and then we're going to go in in the center and just give it a few wackity wax, just to keep the center from puffing up too much. There we go. You want to repeat this process on all of your squares. We're going to pop this into a 400 degree oven now so that this could get a head start and preheat. This way when we load on our toppings and rebake them, the crust stays super crispy. Now here's where things get really fun. During the day when I have a little bit more time, I pre-cut all my veggies, put everything in bowls, and I create a pizza topping bar. This way, the kids can put on what they want, everybody can make their own pizza, less work for me because they're doing all the work, and it's super interactive and makes them eat the food better. It's a win, 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 win. One giant big win. All right, so let's get started. First things first, we're gonna make a regular tomato sauce pizza. Sauce, right on top. Spread that out, make sure to leave that crispy crust because that is such good stuff. Sprinkle a little salt, a little bit of pepper, yum, and let's get some mozzarella cheese on there. There we go, we have one classic pizza. Okay, next we're gonna get really creative. I have some sour cream here, we're gonna put a little bit on. Let's spread that out. What are we putting on top of our sour cream, you ask? We're putting our delicious, bright, yummy peaches. Let's spread a few peaches on there. Oh my gosh. This is a mom pizza. Nobody else in my house would actually eat this besides for me, but while they're all eating these, I would eat this and be super happy with that. This is where things get really crazy, guys. I have blue cheese crumbles here. You don't have to use them if you don't like them, but I strongly encourage you to taste blue cheese because especially blue cheese with fruit is such a good pairing and it is so delicious. Okay, we're gonna get a few crumbles on here. Oh my gosh. Lastly, some balsamic vinegar for a little bit of tang that's gonna caramelize in the oven. Oh my gosh. Right over the top, oh yes. Next up, we are gonna make a spinach pizza. I have some ricotta cheese here. We're just gonna dollop that on. 
Spread that out. Season with a little crushed red pepper flakes, a little sprinkling of salt, some pepper. Add our defrosted and drained spinach. Top our spinach with a little uh, mozzarella. Get that on top of there. That's gonna get golden and bubbly and delicious. Yum. And then you have all these other varieties. You can really go wild. You can do whatever your kids like, whatever you like. You can get creative and play around with the flavors. I'm for sure gonna make a cheeseless one because I got a few anti-cheese people. I know, it's crazy, it's wild, but they do. They have a few that don't like cheese. Little bit of salt, little bit of pepper. That one's gonna stay how it is. Ooh, let's make a mushroom pizza. We have some mascarpone cheese here. You could get this in most grocery stores now. It's pretty mainstream. It's like a creamy Italian cream cheese. It's so yummy and delicious. You have to use a little bit of finesse to spread it out. We're gonna add some sauteed mushrooms to our mascarpone. Oh my God, this is gonna be so delicious. Get those on there really nice and pretty loaded up. Really good mushroom flavor. You could totally use more raw mushrooms also, by the way. I just always have roasted veggies in my house. So if you have those, add those to whatever you're cooking. Let's get a little bit of purple onion on here. Oh. Top it off with some more mozzarella cheese. A bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Boom, gonna pop these in the oven and we'll be right back. Once your cheese is melty and oozy and gooey, your pizzas are ready. Take them out and plate them up. Oh my gosh, look at these, look at these, look at these. Yes. These babies are hot, so let them cool for a minute before you serve them to your family and then dig right in. Oh my gosh, I get all those peachy smells. Oh, and the blue cheese, here we go. Today, we made five kinds of pizzas, but you can make one kind of pizza, two, three, 15, 20 different types of pizza. All you need to have is the ultimate topping bar ready and you are good to go. For this recipe and more delicious recipes, head on over to kosher.com. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. where Israel's rich and famous go shop to get their homes looking fabulous? Well, I went to Pitalohekt, one of the home decor and furniture hotspots, to find out from interior designers in the know what it takes to design the perfect home for the Israeli high class. Have you ever wanted to get a sneak peek into the lives of Israel's rich and famous? Well, today we're here entering the key to luxury living in Israel. This is the place where you can get your hands on the most fabulous interior design. This is Pitalohek, the center of luxury design and furniture in Israel. They've been a staple for Israel's wealthiest since 1962, offering the world's leading international design and furniture brands, from Fendi to Prada to Ralph Lauren Home. Hi. Nice to, meet nice to meet you. I'm going to be meeting with two of Israel's top architects and home designers to learn about the process of designing the perfect home. This is Rachel Falik. She's our executive designer. Hi, Hi. welcome. Thank nice you meeting so you. much. You too. So let's take a quick tour of the showroom. Let's do it. So here we have Bentley. Here we have some Ralph Lauren. Here we have Fendi furniture. Why not? The more Fendi, the better. Here we have Dietre. And from here, we have Roche Bobois. So Roche Bobois does a lot of collaborations with big name designers. For example, this is a collaboration with Jean Paul Gaultier. And this sofa, it's the Majon. And it's very, very well known all around the world. 
So let's say I am a customer living abroad, but I have um, seen or heard of Pita Ojek and I want to work with you guys. Is that an option? Well, usually people from abroad contact us and they, they can go to our website and on our website you can see everything and depends on your needs and what you want, we will get you a quote. We offer the best prices in the luxury market. I got the chance to talk to Orly Silver, an interior designer who's going to walk me through the process of designing a home. So if I was a new client, what would kind of be the color scheme that you would fit for me? Well, see, this is exactly the thing. So even when you come into my studio and I see how you're dressed, that implicates that, that I'm a very a bit, basic colored neutral that person. That you love neutral colors. <laughs> yes. well, the combination, right I can read this. you. It's from the sandals <laughs> to, to your makeup, to your wow. earrings even your jewelry. So I would try to bring myself to your to your direction. Right. Is there a specific brand or room that you typically like steer towards? Pitao Hecht uh, hosts many 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 uh, companies and uh, some are more classic and some are more modern so in this place I can find almost everything for everybody. If I can show you around then I would uh, do delightfully it. show you some beautiful Amazing. pieces so that I'm in love with. Me? colors that are very trendy now are more of the creams, whites, so that would really that would suit really you suit very me. well. 100%. And this is a more trendy material, a trendy look of a sofa, and uh, that would be my pick for now, of course. Could I just like buy it like this? Buy it. And just like take it, yeah. take it in the car and take it home? I actually do feel like I'm at home already though. So I kind of feel you like see, this it's exactly you because you're a bit of a classic and a trendy person, and this would be it. This would be your sofa. Next up, we met with Serge Ben David, who tells us all about one of his favorite homes to design. What I like in Pitao they can uh, propose a, a large scale of uh, product, uh, from furniture to accessories and lighting. And for me, um, to combine um, uh, Roche Beaubois, which is uh, clearly French, very uh, contemporary uh, choices and pieces uh, with a high hand um, like a Fendi uh, is uh, perfect for my design. And that's what the life of the luxurious looks like here in Israel. Now, you may have already assumed this, but the best way to communicate is through dialogue, of course. Though, what do you do when speaking a second language like Hebrew and the way you want to express yourself is beyond your ability? Well, to preemptively remedy such a dilemma, you can follow the inclusive and easy to follow methods from our friends at Ulpan Ol. Let's take a look at ILTV's interview with Orly and Yoel Ganol, co-founders and CEOs of Ulpan Ol. Yoel, Orly, thank you both so much for being with us today. I'm Shalom, Shalom, Aaron. Shalom, Shalom. Thank you. All right, so why is practicing dialogue specifically so crucial to learning a foreign language? Aaron, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If three people are involved in a conversation, how do you call it? A trialogue? A trialogue, yeah. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about when two people are involved well, in a conversation? In this case, it would be a dialogue. Okay, and one person? Monologue. Well, but if that one person speaks to himself, it's probably an insane, crazy person, right? I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> well, I don't know about you. Okay. And anyway, I think the essence of any language is a two-way communication between two people, people at least. Okay. So to create that communication, if you practice a dialogue, you are capable of doing that. But let me address it to Orly. Okay. So uh, when I created our method. I understood that a dialogue is the essence of a language. What are we doing here? Right. We are conversing. You are asking, we are answering. That's the way people are communicating a dialogue. Unfortunately, in many other methods of studying a language, they think that the, the number of words you'll get or the sentences you'll get, that will bring you to the result. Not so. Mm -hmm. The natural way of conversing is the way. And for, as a proof, now that we are getting people in our uh, branches in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv for the Flavor of Israel uh, course, people are coming out of the, our study room 
and going out to the market on different places and speak on their second day. So how, how do you include dialogue specifically into your curriculum? We present our materials in a form of online ebooks, which contain video clips, audio clips, texts. And when you are exposed to that content and you repeat the content, then this content becomes alive for you and you're able to use it in real life situations, right, Orly? It's similar to a child when he listens to the same thing again and again, again and again, and suddenly you hear him say sentences and you say, oh, wow, that's a genius. No, he's not a genius. He just heard it so many times. If you do it intentionally, it works. All right. So where can the viewers find these clips, I think is okay, so one we of believe, the pressing questions. Yeah. We believe in this so much that we decided to present to the ILTV viewers, you dear viewers, our short dialogues on a weekly basis on Thursday. We'll have a special dedicated corner to these dialogues. And even if somebody doesn't know Hebrew at all, these dialogues have subtitles in English, in Hebrew, and phonetic subtitles. So even if you are a total beginner, you can watch those and enjoy and actually learn Hebrew. So we're starting with, with some base, base grammar and, and, uh -huh. uh, and building up from Vocabulary. there. Vocabulary. Yes, exactly. All right, well, I'm very exciting. I'm very excited. <laughs> And you're exciting too. You'll be exciting. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> so are you. Uh, no, we need, we need to see these clips. And so I think uh, uh, for, I think at this point, we should turn to one of these incredible, incredible clips, hopefully the first of many Hebrew learning segments here on ILTV. Thank you. Of course. Yoel, meifo atab in Canada? אני מטורונטו. מאיפה את בישראל? אני מירושלים. את מבינה אנגלית? כן, בטח. אני מבינה אנגלית. אני מבינה גם קצת יידיש. ואתה? אני מבין הרבה יידיש, אבל מדבר רק קצת. אני מבינה. אורלי, בת כמה את? אני בת 21. בן כמה אתה? אני בן 24. סבבה. היי, יואל ואורלי גנור מאולפן אור. זה היה מדהים. אני לא יכול לראות את הבא. כן, כמובן. אחרי חודשיים. אחרי חודשיים. אחרי חודשיים. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. And that's all for today's Good Week Israel. Hope we've helped you start your week off with a smile. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh, and see you next week.